Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Newstos, where I give you all of the latest gaming news. And a bunch of new Xbox Series X information has been circulating on the internet today as several media outlets got to test out the Xbox Series X for themselves. Now I have to say, what we are hearing is incredibly impressive and those backwards compatibility features doesn't just sound good, but I think that they are sounding like real system sellers. What they're doing is absolutely phenomenal, so we're going to talk about that today. Also, we got a new analysis for an upcoming PlayStation 5 first party game, and it appears it might not be able to reach 4K resolution. The question though, is this going to be a trend on the PlayStation 5, or is developers still getting used to the new hardware? So stay tuned for that as well. Before we get into all that though, we do have plenty of other topics to talk about, so let's get right into it. Final Fantasy 16 has been getting a lot of buzz over the last couple weeks, and one thing fans really noticed is that this particular Final Fantasy seems to be a bit different than what we're used to seeing in this franchise, or at least with the mainline entries. It looks much more mature than usual, with darker themes, and there is a lot of gore in this game based off the trailer. Well, it looks like Final Fantasy 16 got a provisional rating of 18 in Europe, which would be the equivalent of a mature rating in the United States. This really isn't overly surprising based off the trailer that we saw, but it does confirm that this is looking to be a much more mature mainline Final Fantasy game, and this does impact the overall demographic considering you'll have to be 18 or older to even buy this game. Now to be fair, Type-0 was also a very gory game, but this is the first mainline entry to go in this direction, and honestly, I'm more than okay with it. One thing I love about this franchise is that each game is unique to themselves. They aren't just simply going with a cookie cutter formula, and I think that's the right decision. You want these teams to bring life to their own creation, and I think 16 has the potential of really surprising a lot of people. The Final Fantasy XIV team is behind this game, and while XIV is an MMO, it also arguably has the best narrative out of any of the modern Final Fantasy games, especially with the expansions. So we could see them put something really special together here, as they primarily get to focus on a single player experience, and I don't want them to be held back by trying to force a teen rating. Granted, this is a provisional rating, so who knows this still could change. With that said though, one more positive bit of news regarding Final Fantasy 16 is that it was confirmed that the gameplay we saw was not final, and the graphics will improve upon release. The team wanted to put together a trailer with gameplay rather than just a small teaser with a logo, and I do applaud them for that. I think what we've seen so far is very promising. Now here's a bit of interesting news. So the former president of Rockstar North, Leslie Benzies, has raised $42 million to develop his own open world sci-fi game by the name of Everywhere. You do have to keep in mind that he was the lead producer for games like Grand Theft Auto 3, 4, and 5, so he has a huge pedigree of making not only great games, but industry defining as well, especially for big open world games with strong narratives. The thing is, he left Rockstar North back in 2016 to form his own studio, Rocketboy, and since then it's been very evident that he left Rockstar on bad terms. They have been in and out of court since his departure, but now that he has raised $42 million to work on his own game at his new studio, he may have a chance to show the world once again why he was the lead producer to some of the most successful games ever made. Of course, we really don't know much about Everywhere just yet, but if it's anything like the Grand Theft Auto series, it might be worth keeping an eye out for. We also got some new release dates, some good and some a little disappointing. For the good news, Yakuza 7 Like a Dragon finally got a PlayStation 5 release date. Now this is a game that really took a lot of people by surprise when Sega announced that Yakuza 7 would be a next generation exclusive for the Xbox Series X, and it would also be a launch title for the Xbox Series. That was a very surprising announcement considering the history of this franchise being mostly PlayStation exclusives until recently. Do keep in mind though that it will also be available for the Xbox One, PC, and the PlayStation 4, but for some odd reason, it was being delayed on the PlayStation 5. To this day, we really don't know exactly why. Maybe Xbox and Sega came to some kind of timed exclusive deal, or maybe they just needed some extra time to develop it for the PlayStation 5. But either way, it will officially come to the PlayStation 5 on March 2nd of 2021. 
This would be right around four months after it releases everywhere else, but at least it's not going to be an overly long wait. And hey, you can even buy it on the PlayStation 4 and get a free upgrade as soon as it does release on the PlayStation 5. So I think that this is overall great news. Unfortunately though, that Mass Effect Trilogy remaster that we keep talking about on the channel is reportedly being delayed to 2021. According to the Venture Beat journalist and insider Jeff Grubb, it was originally being planned for a November release of 2020, but because some unforeseen issue with the original Mass Effect, not particularly playing nice with the new hardware, it will be delayed into 2021. This has been a weird story to follow though, because technically, the Mass Effect trilogy has yet to be officially confirmed by EA, but according to these leaks, not only do we now know about it, but it's being delayed before being officially announced. Jeff Grubb has proven to be a pretty reliable insider though, so there is reason to believe this leak. I'm still hoping that it will come to the Switch personally, but that isn't sounding too promising at the moment. But I'm sad to say, this looks to be yet another game delay in 2020. Let's talk about the Xbox Series X though, because several media outlets have gotten their hands on the Xbox Series X. Yeah, I'm a little jealous, but the Xbox Series X is sounding incredibly impressive. All of these different outlets got to test the backwards compatibility for the Series X, and check this out. The Series X is loading backwards compatible games significantly faster than what they did on the Xbox One X, and in many cases, they're loading about five times as fast if not even more than that. Yeah, that is great, and I mean Control is loading at a blazingly fast 10 seconds compared to 58 on the Xbox One X. Then you have games like Red Dead Redemption 2 clocking in at a 38 seconds compared to the very sluggish 2 minutes and 8 seconds on the Xbox One X. That is phenomenal, but it doesn't stop there either because the frame rate for these games are also drastically improved and even doubles the frame rate on some games. Games like Sekiro and Final Fantasy XV will now be able to run at 60 frames per second on the Xbox Series X. And here's the crazy part. These are not Xbox Series optimized games. This means that it's taking these older games and without any extra work or patches by the developers that they are running significantly better. And this isn't even mentioning that the Xbox Series looks to add things like auto HDR and improved texture filtering. Now the Auto HDR will be very interesting as well, and a feature I'm really looking forward to. Microsoft will only apply Auto HDR to titles where it looks pleasing, so that's actually really good to hear. I mean, you don't want this thing to be buggy and it just make things look worse than what they already did, so I'm glad that they're only doing this with select titles. To put it quite simply though, this is taking your existing library of games or future games that you want to own that is currently available on the Xbox One and takes them into the next generation playing better than they ever did before. Honestly, this alone, in my opinion, is a system seller for the Xbox Series. And yes, Xbox Series S also has these backwards compatible features. I don't know about you, but there are still several games that I want to play on the Xbox One, and knowing that I'm going to get a much better experience playing these games on the Series X is a very big deal for me. I think backwards compatibility is often overlooked when it comes to next generation consoles, but I think with these improvements, it's going to be an eye opener for a lot of people. Now one other big topic coming from these hands on impressions are the available capacity on these solid state drives for the Xbox Series. So it does appear that the Series X will have 802 gigabytes of memory left after the operating system and system files. That does seem like a lot of memory for those things, and some people are a little upset about that. But this is actually pretty normal on really any kind of hard drive. There is always going to be that reserve space for the operating system, system files, and things like Quick Resume, which games will take advantage of. The PlayStation 5 and the Series S will be much the same way, where some memory will be eaten up by other things that are not your games. The same can be said with really any console, but if you do want to expand that memory, and maybe you don't want to shell out an extra $220 for the Xbox Series 1TB solid state drive expansion, there is a workaround. You can invest in an external USB 3.0 hard drive and download games to that. After that, you can just transfer these games to the internal solid state drive on the Series X, and apparently this transfer works pretty fast. Jeff Grubb reported that Assassin's Creed Origins took just 7 minutes and 46 seconds to transfer, so if you really do want that extra space, it could be a nice workaround, especially with the Series S, which could be strapped for storing games on its internal solid state drive. 
On to our last topic though, Digital Foundry analyzed the Demon Souls remake that they revealed at the PlayStation 5 showcase. Now many fans right now believe this is the best looking game for next generation, and I have to say, it does look very good visually. The animations still feel a little off to me as they don't seem to have much weight to them, but it still is one of my most anticipated games going into next generation. I'm a very big fan of Demon's Souls and I'm thrilled to see it come back. The thing is, Digital Foundry analyzed the gameplay and revealed it was running at 1440p and 60 frames per second, meaning it missed out on that coveted 4K resolution. Now the good news here is that it will be running at 60 frames per second, so it looks like that they are prioritizing frame rate here, but this seems to be a trend with the PlayStation 5 so far. Spider-Man Miles Morales and Ratchet & Clank were both very similar, where Sony had to offer a performance mode tweaking the resolution and frame rate, and that is important to keep in mind here. We could see something similar with Demon's Souls, and it could offer that performance mode where you sacrifice graphics in order to reach 4K and 60 frames per second. As to what exactly you're sacrificing though, remains to be seen. If I were to guess, I would say that they're probably toning back the ray tracing as that is incredibly demanding. It's also in my opinion going to be one of the most noticeable changes next generation. But with that inclusion, it does beg the question, is this going to be a common theme for next generation games? Will they be able to run 4K resolution, 60 frames per second, and ray tracing all at the same time on most games? Or are most of these big AAA games going to have to offer a performance mode? I think at the very least, it's good news that they are offering options, but still running all three at the same time definitely seems to be no guarantee just yet. For that matter, we don't know about the Series X just yet either. This will be something worth paying attention to as we head into next generation with these big AAA games, but let me know some of your thoughts about this topic in the comments below. Anyways though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.